Disclaimer. I like DC Comics. I like Superman. I like Batman. I like The Flash. And I like the Rebirth issues. Wait, Rebirth? What's that? DC Rebirth is a relaunch of all the superhero comic book titles. It restored the DC Universe to a form much like that prior to the Flashpoint storyline while still incorporating numerous elements of the New 52. The New 52? What's that? The New 52 is another relaunch before Rebirth. It follows the conclusion after the Flashpoint. Flashpoint? What's that? Oh god damn it. What I hate the most about DC Comics is that it is very difficult for a newcomer to just pick up a book and start reading it. Unless they literally start reading it from the first volume of everything. Let me show you what I mean. For this example, I'm going to assume that this new viewer only has the very basic knowledge of Superman. He's super strong, super fast, he can fly, he has heat vision, he has cold breath, he's an alien raised by human parents, Lois Lane, Lex Luthor, yada yada yada. This person has only seen some of the mainstream films like Zack Snyder's Man of Steel and Superman vs. Batman, and is a young viewer who wants to get into Superman through comics as well. Well, apparently, Rebirth is a good place to start for newcomers, so let's start with Superman Rebirth issue number 1. <clears throat> All that is necessary. Wait, 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 wait. There are two Superman? Right off the bat, we see one Superman dying in another Superman's arms in the first page. This Superman is the Superman from the New 52. He died at the end of the Final Days of Superman. This Superman is from before the Flashpoint and somehow ended up in the New 52 universe. Next, we see Lana Lang. She's his childhood friend, trying to take back the dead Superman's body. The Dark Superman says that the dead Superman can come back to life because the Dark Superman died before as well. No, not that one. That one. The death of Superman written way back in the 1990s. This Superman died protecting the city from a monster called Doomsday. No, not that one. That one. I thought he was made by Lex Luthor. That's the shitty one. This is the good one. Anyhow, Superman didn't actually die. He was put into something like a healing coma and then came back out fine. Then they take his body, bury it with his parents, and Dark Superman makes a statue of dead Superman and decides to become this world Superman. Although confusing, it was at least short. It says here that the adventure continues on the Action Comics and Superman number 1. I thought this was Superman number 1. No, you see, this is Superman Rebirth. The ongoing story is DC Universe Rebirth Superman. Okay, okay, god. I just want to read about Superman. In that case, let's try the Action Comics. It is the comic which introduced Superman after all, way back in 1938. Huh. Lex is trying to be Superman. Superman has a son? You see, this Superman hooked up with Lois Lane and has a son. This is Superboy. No, not that one. That one's evil. Look, his name is Jonathan Kent. Not that one, that's his dad. That one. Superman goes to Lex, they get into an argument, then here comes Doomsday. Why is he in a suit? Don't worry about it. I thought Doomsday was dead. He comes back to life every time he's killed, then he becomes immune to whatever killed him. Sounds overpowered as fuck, I know. They have an epic clash between Superman, Doomsday, and Lex. But all sorts of crazy shit's going on right along with it. Lex pulls out something called the Mother Box. Apocalyptic Tech won't be going into that rabbit hole yet. There's another guy calling himself Clark Kent. Wonder Woman pops out of nowhere. And a blur of Superwoman just appears and disappears for literally a page. Superwoman? No, that's Supergirl. There's a difference. No, not that one. That one's evil. The other one. The other, other one. <sighs> the most recent one. Oh, god damn it. It's this one. This one. She's Lois Lane. I thought Lois Lane was married to Superman. No, this is the other Lois Lane from the New 52 universe. She got her powers when Superman died. Not that time. That one. Fun fact, she dies in literally one volume. Getting back to the main story once again, Superman eventually leads Doomsday to the Fortress of Solitude and banishes him into the Phantasone. Except it gets intercepted by this dude in a green hood. That was all in a span of six issues, and a ton of questions would pop into a new reader's head just by reading them all. Another problem is that it's difficult to even research for the right answer. As you saw before, just by typing Superwoman into Google, we get Lois Lane from Prime Earth, Lana Lang from Prime Earth, Lucy Lane from New Earth, Lois Lane from Earth 3, Laurel from Earth 11, a YouTuber called Lily Singh, 
and God knows how many else. There are too many different individuals under the same alias, and some individuals fall under multiple aliases. Even when you know what you're searching for, there's still a ton of information in history that gets tacked on. Remember that thing called the mother box? It's a piece of technology found in New Genesis. What's New Genesis? It's the planet of the new gods ruled by the High Father. But Lex probably got this mother box from the Dark Side War. What's the Dark Side War? It was a war that happened during the New 52, involving the Justice League, Dark Side, and the Anti Monitor. Who's Dark Side? Who's the Anti Monitor? He's one of those being which new controls. Guns. He rules the Antimatter Universe. Everything is so dense with information and backstory with alternate storylines, retcons, and reboots that you don't even know what's real anymore. There's such a huge wall of information for a newcomer to drink in at once that is mind boggling. Even if you just decide to read about one superhero and that one only, that one guy's comic will probably be connected to a bunch of other guys. Take for example the other classic Batman. I am Batman. If you want to understand Batman, you can't just read Batman. He's one of the founding members of the Justice League. So there's the Justice League Rebirth. Some of his sidekicks eventually become their own heroes and have their own teams or have one together with Batman. Then we have the individual members of the Justice League getting involved with Batman. He's a part of the Trinity with Wonder Woman and Superman. Superman's son, John, has his own comic with Batman's son, Damien. And the Flash just had a crossover with Batman to visit Batman's dad from the Flashpoint. Yeah, remember that event? They meet Batman's dad, it's cool. Then we have Dr. Manhattan from the Watchmen coming out from like a panel and the comic announcing the Doomsday Clock, whatever that is. And we have Mr. Oz, the green dude from Action Comics, kidnapping Red Robin in Detective Comics. Just one character is connected to so many other characters and other comics. And this is only talking about Rebirth. I haven't even scratched the older storylines like the New 52 or alternate storylines like Injustice. Because here's the thing. Batman isn't just the world's greatest detective anymore. He's a crime-solving, crime-fighting, world-saving, psychic-training, not-so-friendly neighborhood dad. With an actual wife now, potentially. This isn't to say that you can't enjoy these comics without knowing absolutely everything. Superman fighting for his life against a foe that's killed him before? That's cool. Batman helping out a lonely girl who just lost her brother, that's heartwarming. But to understand the comics? To really know everything that's going on? That takes time. And research. Lots of research. I'm not saying it's not worth it, but it takes a lot of commitment. But once you do get at least a little grasp of what's going on, you have so much stories to read that you could probably spend a good portion of your lifetime just catching up with them all and having a blast. Quality may vary. So, do you like superheroes? Do you want to get into comics? Well, I wish you luck.